Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about Palantir Technologies PLTR stock. In this video, we will be analyzing two articles, to where the first one is titled, This Promising Trend Hints That Palantir Could Be A Great AI Stock To Buy Right Now. So clearly, this is a bullish positive article, but we are going to compare and contrast this with another article titled, PLTR Warning, Why Now Is The Time To Steer Clear Of This AI play. So we're going to be comparing both of these articles to see what the bulls and bears think about this company and where I personally land and what you need to know if you are going to invest or if you are already an investor in this company. For more videos on Palantir Technologies, don't forget to go and annihilate that like button right now. Comment your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you are new and don't forget to become a member of this channel for as little as 99 cents per month because that's what keeps me here on YouTube. And with all of that being said, let's jump right into today's stories. Palantir Technologies is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises as well as government agencies, and they have been one of the hottest stocks of the year of 2023. Palantir, ticker symbol PLTR, has been on an absolute tear over the last few months, to where their share price has skyrocketed by over 177% year to date. And in conjunction with that, we also see them improving their overall margins and profitability. However, in this video, we want to dive into their return on invested capital, also known as ROIC. And right now we see that it's on a very upward trend. And you can see as time goes on, we are headed toward a very nice upwards trend. So this is a flashing bullish positive signal for the software specialist's future stock price. But let's talk a little more about it if you're not familiar with the ROIC and what this means for the company. So we know the ROIC is calculated by taking the company's net profit after taxes and dividing it by the average invested capital. Meanwhile, WACC is calculated by combining costs that a company has from debt and issuing new shares weighted against a company's market capitalization. And if you're not following along right now, don't worry. I'm gonna to summarize this in just a moment, but first I want to quote directly from this article which says, WACC being higher than ROIC is often a signal that shareholder value is being destroyed, but investors should take the long view, particularly when it comes to growth stocks and potentially explosive plays in the AI space. Palantir's ROIC being both negative and below WACC highlights the fact that this is a high risk stock, but these characteristics aren't unusual among specialized technology companies making big bets on categories with revolutionary potential. So to summarize, even though Palantir's ROIC remains below their WACC, and again, you can see here that their WACC is in blue and that their ROIC is in yellow, and ideally, we're going to see this yellow metric actually exceed their blue metric over the next few years, which is going to be very good. But as of right now, they are not. We can just see this very positive uptrend in their overall ROIC, while their WACC is growing at a much slower pace, which is good because we want to this yellow metric and trend to outpace the blue trend. So although the ROIC remains below its WACC, long-term investors with above average risk tolerance may find a lot to like about this current trend. Like we just mentioned, their ROIC is growing a lot quicker than their WACC, which is fantastic news. And that's why the business continues to look highly scalable, which is what we are betting as long-term investors on. We are betting that their long-term growth trajectory is going to be a lot more aggressive than it is currently because we are looking for the future of this company. Palantir has also generated very impressive margins and profitability that have continued to improve over time. The company now has been profitable for three consecutive quarters in a row on a generally accepted accounting principles basis, which is very positive. Right now, the PLTR share price trades for $18.18, while very bullish professionals believe this could surge up to $25 over the next 12 months, and I agree with them. Thanks to Palantir's very high performance and their amazing fundamentals, this has led to great investor optimism, and their technology has led them to land contracts with the U.S. Air Force, the FBI, the CIA, the Pentagon, the Department of Health and Human Services, the D. 
DOD, and other government agencies. On top of that, they also had some very large wins in the private sector with companies like United Airlines, Citigroup, and Kinder Morgan, among many others. So the company is currently rolling out new artificial intelligence technologies, which is going to be very beneficial for the commercial side of things. And as more commercial clients realize Palantir's overall potential, this is going to lift their overall share price by Palantir landing more and more contracts, which are going to increase their overall revenues and earnings. Speaking about their revenues and earnings, Palantir is currently valued at approximately 73 times this year's expected earnings, which is very, very high. Ideally, we would want this below 50. And at the same time, they're trading at 16 times their expected sales, and ideally, we would want that around 10. So according to their accounting ratios for their PE ratio and their PS multiple, these are very high metrics, which could indicate that the company is overvalued right now. And let me say that I agree. Yes, based off of current statistics, they are overvalued. But once we incorporate their future growth over the next five years, these metrics look a lot more digestible. So if you're willing to hold these companies over the next five years, you could get a lot of value from this company. Palantir is projected to grow by around a 19% CAGR for their revenues, which will radically lower this 16 PS multiple down to 10 or lower. On top of that, we can see that their PE multiple, which is very high at 73, is going to come down a lot considering that Palantir is set to grow their earnings extremely rapidly, which is amazing, and we know this by looking at their peg ratio, which takes their growth into consideration. So overall, it's very good to see that Palantir is growing their margins, growing their profitability, growing their earnings, and growing their revenues, all while their ROIC metric is set to outpace their weighted average cost of capital, which is very positive. So overall, we have a lot of good things to look forward to, on top of the fact that they could win the NHS contract, on top of the fact that they're about to enter a fourth quarter of profitability on a gap basis, meaning that they could be included in the S&P 500, which is going to increase their overall share price very dramatically. But now let's talk about some of the downsides of this company and why this author thinks investors should stay away from Palantir. In the financial markets AI race, investors are focusing on specific stocks, with Palantir being one of the most innovative on that list, and it has gained significant attention and attraction due to their AI capabilities. And for aggressive growth investors who are willing to hold this company for the long term, it could be worthwhile to buy this company at current levels. However, let's talk about some of the drawbacks and risks associated with this, because the wisest thing may be to wait for this company to pull back in their share price and then invest. Right now, Palantir is profitable with two point two billion dollars worth of annual revenue and the buzz around generative AI has helped out Palantir's overall valuation by leaps and bounds. However, skeptics believe that Palantir is overpriced, meaning that it is going to drop in price dramatically as low as nine dollars per share due to their year-over-year -year revenue growth only being around 13 percent for their compounding annual growth rate in regards to their revenue. However, this metric can be misleading. Yes, although they currently have a 13 percent CAGR, that is anticipated to jump to a 16 percent CAGR and then again up to a 19% CAGR, which is leaps and bounds above that 13% that this author is choosing to highlight artificially and out of context. Next, according to Fintel, only 8% of the stock is currently being shorted. However, there is a 57% of off exchange trading volume is associated with short positions. So again, this company could fall in their overall share price according to this author. Now, the author is correct that their revenues have slowed down compared to their past because they used to bring in around 24% pertaining to a CAGR and they projected originally a 30% annual growth rate throughout the years until 2025 and that is not what is happening right now. But Palantir's management attributes this slowdown in revenue due to government contract timing and commercial platform changes which they expect to sort themselves out over the long term. But there are some benefits because meanwhile the company is cutting costs costs to boost their overall adjusted operating margins, increase profitability, and they also initiated a $1 billion buyback program while also having around $3 billion worth of cash and or cash equivalents on their balance sheet. Overall, Palantir's valuation is looking very high right now whether or not you're a bear or a bull. Someone who has a bullish and positive perspective of the company believes that Palantir will grow into these overall accounting ratios and valuations over time, but the bears in the short term believe that this company is over 
overpriced. And honestly, they each have a portion of truth in them. But since we don't know what the future holds, we're just going to have to wait and see, which is why I personally advocate only for a 5% initial portfolio allocation in this company, meaning that if you have a $100,000 portfolio, you should only invest around $5,000 into this company and you can do it all at once up front or you can do this over time. But I wouldn't advocate to overexpose yourself to any singular risky growth company because that would be improper risk management, which makes you run the risk of unnecessary losses. Therefore, there is a substantial downside and risk to this company, but there's also a very good strong upside if this company remains strong in their profits and revenues. So we have very bearish analysts and very bullish analysts with even Morgan Stanley chiming in to where they downgraded their overall valuation for Palantir based on concerns that their market cap is too high. On the other hand, we do see Wall Street analysts being cautious while retail investors see this more as a momentum play. So if you're not used to volatility in the overall share price of a stock, then this stock may not be for you. And if you're not willing to hold this company over the next five years, regardless of what the stock price does during that time, even if it falls down to $5, then again, this stock may not be for you. You're going to be way better off investing into ETFs like VTI, QQQM, and SCHD. Those are going to be really good ETFs for you to invest in because those have stable and long-term growth. And I am personally invested into those ETFs as well. But I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about this bullish and bearish article. Where do you agree or disagree with these authors? And as always, if you want more videos like this one, don't forget to go and annihilate that like button right now. Comment your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you are new and I'll see you in the next YT video.